I want you to go to... So I've actually been reading Matthew um, 5, 6, and I think it's 7 every morning, you oh, know, okay. and it... Right. Awesome, okay. and... <laughs> well, it all started um, with our trip to Florida, you know, when my great-grandma passed away, just... Right. There's just so much stuff kept happening, and then happening, and then happening, and then God got put on the back burner, kind of. Like, I was always there, like, acknowledging him as father, but never trying to press into that place, and then there was just that moment in time where something broke, and the Holy Spirit was like, you know, he, I could just feel his grievance, and I just broke down and just surrendered everything, and just, I was literally driving around town all day, just crying wow. like a baby, and then just submitting everything in me to, to the fire, you know, and then and then last Wednesday, I got, didn't get off work until like 7.30, didn't get home and done with everything until so late, but I tuned in, and everything that Justin and Carlos were saying was everything that I was experiencing, and then at that point, it was just like, well, Lord, I completely surrender, so I started waking up super early every morning, and then Whoa. reading to, to get back into that point, to, to focus my, the eye of my heart, yeah. you know, like if I be singularly intertwined with Christ the Alpha, then I shall be full of light, and just just receiving that, and then just, I think it was maybe Saturday morning, or Friday, no, I think it was Saturday morning, yeah, I just, I was praying, and then as I'm praying, I, you know, I was reading, I was reading the word, and, and Jesus had said, except ye, except ye exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom, and I was like, well, I want to enter into the kingdom, and I know that I have the righteousness of Christ, not the righteousness of the law. So I just started kind of meditating all that, and, and then all of a sudden, I just started acknowledging the Holy Spirit and just saying that I don't have the righteousness of the law, but my righteousness is found in Christ, and that I'm presented faultless to the Father, and I just started acknowledging the Holy Spirit and just saying that He's my teacher and my guide. And I had also been reading John 10 and 11 about the sheepfold yeah. and the door, and then it, it was like I, the porter opened at the door, and I just climbed up like it was a, a ladder into this area where there was, I could see the mountain very far away in the distance, and I was perceiving all this in my spirit. And then, and then all of a sudden, I was just, just praying and just saying, Jesus, you present me to the Father. It is your will that I be with you where you are to behold your glory, and your glory is the Father. And Father, your word in John, 1 John says, that if we pray anything according to your will, I have the confidence that, that you hear me and that I have the comp confidence that I receive the petitions that I desire of you. And I want to be with you where you are, Father. And at that point, Jesus completely presented me to him, and I was at his feet, and I just felt completely laid open and beholden before him. And, and at that point, I just started praying for the baptism of the fire to just burn out everything and the winnowing fork to come and to just separate the chaff from the wheat. And I could feel a physical movement all in this area right here as things were being separated and pulled out and uprooted. And it was, it was an intense uh, experience. And since then, I've really just I've been trying to continue moving in beyond that, you know, because I want to have greater dwelling and in, in habitation with the Father. I don't want just, just an encounter here and an encounter there, but just daily habitation. Yeah. And, and it was a serious, like, breaking point. Like, Cody actually called me right as I was experiencing that, and, and there were so many tears on my face, it made my phone hang up. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. That's awesome. Yes, sir. That's good stuff. You know, you get to that point, you have to get to that point in your hunger, and um, there's a lot of people that are hungry that don't know how to move into God, and then sometimes you got to, get to that place where your eye does get into a singular position interwoven in Christ. And he actually talks about this in Matthew 6, because right before this, he talks about it in, in Matthew 19, I mean, Matthew 6, 19, he says, lay not up yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. He says, for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So you have to re realign the treasure. The enemy's constantly going to fight God as your treasure. God ultimately is your treasure. He ha and when you're in love with him, I mean, just completely just caught up in love with him, he is your treasure. I mean, I mean when you get in that thing, and you, it's all day long. He's your treasure. He's the treasure of your heart. And then what the enemy does is starts trying to move in 
to your heart or he wants to bring circumstance in because he wants to stop the treasure process. Amen? He wants to either move it out to his system or he wants to come and just convolute the heart. And so what we learn over time is how to get above, say get above, and how to stay above. Now that is something that is going to have to be caught more than taught. Amen? You're going to have to learn that through trial and error, how to stay above. First, you're going to learn to get above. Amen? And a lot of people learn to climb up. I, I, I tell you, so many people come in, and, they, and when they hear messages, they'll tell me this. I hear this all the time. I have been there. I was caught up there. I know what you're talking about. I was there for six months or I was there for a year and then something happened and I haven't seen that place in 10 years, you know. And they don't know how to get back up to that place because their hunger calls them to ascend into the Lord. But what God's training us for is not just how to get there, but stay there. Amen. That's where you take up the cross daily. It's people get the wrong impression of taking up the cross. They think they're going to be carrying these burdens around. Taking up the cross is the most liberating thing ever. Taking up the cross is following his will, not yours, surrendering yourself to be clothed in him. And when you get clothed in him, you're clothed in liberty. So it's the way the mind reads taking up the cross. The old man said, oh, I got to bear the burden of the heat today. Walk around like this. Take, I'm taking up my cross. Anybody want to follow me, you know. That's not what he's saying. It's the surrender of the old man the will of the old man, and you have to lay him on the cross. In exchange, you get the glory of the new man, and you get the glory of Christ, and you get the freedom and the liberty, and that's actually a position of liberty, not bondage. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for the one amen, praise God. Glory to God. So I want to talk to you about, because uh, I had this open right before we came up here, is how to keep your eye. How to keep the eye. Amen. How to keep from getting the black eye. <laughs> Amen. Because he's going to tell you right here where your treasure is. Now he's going to go. He's going to go right into the eye. The Lord know when he's teaching, you got to understand he's moving in a spiritual dimension. He goes where your treasure is there is where your heart be also. It's also where your eye will be. He's not talking about these eyes. He's talking about the eyes of the heart, whereas you see the kingdom, perceive the kingdom, the, the eye of vision, the eye of destiny, the eye of the heart, the eye of compass, everything about the kingdom. If you can't see where you're going, you'll get convoluted, you'll get sidetracked, you'll get moved off course, and then all God is is just coming to church on Sunday morning. And there is a lot of places that can facilitate a Sunday morning Christian, especially in America. Amen. But what happens is, is if your hunger is not moved into the right direction it, and, and focused in the right direction, it'll, it'll get convoluted. And the enemy will convolute it. He'll either convolute it with the world, distraction, or he'll convolute it with trial, harassment, labor, toil, circumstance, tribulation. It doesn't matter whether he's fighting you. Or he's trying to move you into the lust of the world. He still, his one purpose is to move you out from your position with God. He wants to move and offset your compass. Because if you offset your compass, he's going to offset you. And if you get offset, it, it's a, just a matter of time that trouble is going to start. Amen? What happens when you get out of alignment, and I used to talk about momentum a lot, like, a, like an ocean liner that was on the... On the, uh, you ever seen Titanic? Anybody see the Titanic? I mean, when they crank, you remember when in Titanic how they would crank that big engine up? They had to stoke that fire, and they would throw that fire, and they got ten men throwing logs in there to pre create that pressure, so that piston would turn, that steam would, and you could see it crank just a little bit of time, just a little bit. Of, then it got going. Then it got going. It goes, and then all of a sudden they're moving that huge ship across the water. And it's starting to move now. The momentum's on. Now, when they saw the iceberg dead ahead, I mean, they're up there talking, they're freezing, they're looking, and then they see the iceberg. Well, you're not going to stop that thing. Just in, You're not going to. The guy, he slams it in reverse, but that thing is still going. 
And it slams the whole engine, and all of a sudden they have to go in reverse to try to turn that thing. But there's so much momentum. It, just, it drove it right into the side of that iceberg. Well, in the spirit, a lot of ways, we can crank that momentum up like that. It takes time to crank that momentum up. And what people don't want to do is keep the stay of the course where that momentum's cranked up. When you get that momentum going, you could literally turn your engine off. You can stop feeding it, but you're going to still go. And you're going to go. And you're going to go. And what happens when you stop feeding the process and you get distracted, but everything's still glorious and you're, the spirit's still moving and everything's going, wow, well, I don't have to do this. Well, when you're young, you do that. When you get of age, you don't do that anymore. Why? Because you stop dead still in the Atlantic. And all that you cranked up, all that time cranking up, how many of you know what I'm talking about? All that was ever cranked up is just, and all of a sudden, now the enemy comes in like a flood. And he comes in, and you don't have the same momentum you had before. You don't have the same position that you had before when you were above him. And now he starts trying to feel, and now you're in one trial after another, after another, after another, and you're fighting all this stuff, and then you can start developing doctrines off of that. And once you start doing that, when you know that there's something better, there comes a time where you'll make the shift. How I many you know what I'm talking about? There's come time you'll just come to a dead end. And it's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this anymore. I got to get back up in the high places. Now, once you get back up, it takes you got to go all the way, do it all over again. But, but once you get back up there, you have something you didn't have before. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Anybody? Am I talking to anybody? Three people? Oh, amen. Praise God. Talking to three people in the service and two people there. I got five disciples right now. Praise God. All I need is get 12 disciples and we're ready to roll. Praise God. A couple on the internet. We got 12. Hallelujah. Let's do it. So once you get up in the high place again, there is a freedom and there's a liberty there. It doesn't mean you don't go through any things, but what I found out is when you do go through things, you've got armor around you that's thick. You've got glory around you. And so the trials just, they come at you, but they drop off. The arrows come, but you've got a shield around you that's quenching the fiery darts. So you're not feeling it. You're still going through it, but you're not feeling it. It's not getting on the inside of you. When your trial gets on the inside of you, you're in trouble. Did you hear what I just said? When your trial starts pervading, it starts not, I'm not talking about going through something you got all twisted around one day. I'm talking about when it starts growing up in you. When your trials start pervading and growing up to where it's on your mouth all the time. It's on your lips. It's on your mouth. It's in your heart. Guess what? He has set up camp in here. Woe is me. All this is undone. All this God win. Why? Man, I'll turn on unbelievable Christian stations sometime and listen to the songs of unbelief. And I'm not a judgmental person. I'm like, did they just really sing that? I mean, because that's what they're going through and they're creating a song from it. I'm like, they're creating a song because the trial has overrun them. And now it's up in them. And that is a breeding ground for the enemy of unbelief. And there's such a lack of freedom and liberty. Listen, when you want breakthrough, breakthrough is an atmosphere. Not just out here. Breakthrough is an atmosphere in here. If you want breakthrough, you're going to have to get this in here in breakthrough. You've got to get your heart in atmosphere. Say kingdom atmosphere in here. You get your heart elevated in God. I'm going to show you how to do that. Well, we just do that all the time. Just jump on the website. We're always telling you. But you get your heart in an elevated position in God. You have an atmosphere for breakthrough. You have an atmosphere for kingdom advancement. You have an atmosphere for increase in multiplication. Amen. Got to keep this above all things. What did book of Proverbs say? Guard, keep your heart with all, say all, with some diligence, just a little bit of diligence. 
You got to be diligent. If you let it go, you're going to pay a price for it. And anybody's ever paid that price, that is, uh, once you've been in the high places and you're not in the high places anymore, I don't even like getting out for two or three days. I don't like what it feels like. I like the liberty and the freedom all the time. I like the peace all the time. It's not that I'm not going through something. I just like being shielded. I like the shielding effect of being in the high places. So when the dart comes, oh, was that a dart? Oh, oh, okay. That was, that was it? That's all he's got? But boy, when you're not in the high places, you'll feel those darts come in. Those words will get in. People's behavior gets you will come in. All kinds of stuff will start coming in. The enemy is just kind of encroaching your land. You'll feel that encroachment. When you feel I don't like what that feels like. How many of you like what that feels like? How many of you love the high places and what that feels like? When you get it, so what you do is you get trained to stay there. That's what God's trying to do is train us to stay. It's not asking us to be perfect. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have things like that. But look, one bad day is not going to pull you out of the high places. What pulls you out of the high places is, is laying, laying it all down and stopping, getting distracted. And that gets you out. And then all of a sudden, the enemy, he's got a thousand ways. You cannot defeat him in his own territory. You cannot defeat him in his own systems. He's too skilled. He's too cunning. He's too sly. He is a sly dog. He's slick. But when you get in the high places, he cannot defeat you. He cannot because you are above him. How many know what I'm talking about, the high places? The high places is a throne of grace and beyond. Amen? Chris, put our uh, thing up there. The high, the high places is not just worshiping your way up and saying, hallelujah, shimmy, shoo, shoo. That is not high places. You can go to church and get up in the spirit and the next day just get hammered. I'm talking about an ascent into the kingdom of God through the living doorway, post throne of grace, high places. That's high places. The lily's grace, high place. The tree of life, high place. The love of the father, high place. Those high places right there will keep you. They'll keep you in the glory realm, amen? They'll keep you in a place where the enemy, he may have assignments against you, but it's not getting inside you. Look at the way the Lord would walk and the disciples. They were constantly getting stirred up, and he was not. And he was in the five-foot vicinity from them, always, because he always lived in a different place than they did. He was always in his father. Amen? And they were always in the circumstance. Amen? And he would just marvel at them. I mean, he'd just look at them and like, man, when you're in the Spirit, there's no, place, there's no better way to be. Amen? Those high places, through that door, through the throne of grace, starting with the rest. Hey, uh, Cody, while we're here, uh, let's get that image where you can work on it. And then we, we, we're going we're gonna to update it. Amen. I want to put everything on with the Lily's grace and get to get all updated from where we are now. Because I got that image in the spirit one day and we weren't even there. I just saw the whole thing and I'm like, oh, what's all that? You know, I could see certain things. And so we put it all together. But now we're actually entering in. We know what's there and we've been in these places. We know what it feels like. Mm, glory to God. So where was that? Matthew 6. So where your treasure is, first thing you do, number one, keep God as your treasure. Always. I don't care if you're rolling in the dough. Keep God as your treasure. Keep him always as your treasure. Don't let anything else become your treasure because the second something becomes your treasure, your heart's going to move to it. And that thing's going to fill your heart. It doesn't mean you can't have stuff or things, houses, all that stuff. All that's fine. Listen, you can live Gaius. I don't know if you ever studied Gaius in the Bible. He had three houses. All the apostles stayed at his homes. He had three different houses. He was a very wealthy man, and he was highly respected in the New Testament church. 
That's the one John wrote about. I wish above all things, Gaius, that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. He's telling a guy that has three houses, I wish above all things that you keep prospering because you are blessing the apostolic brethren. They were under major persecution, but Gaius was always housing them and caring for them and sending them on their journey because he had means, lots of means. Amen? So you can do this with it or without. In fact, this last day church has to overcome has to overcome. Listen, the church under persecution thrived until the Roman emperor, um, uh, Constantine, he decided to stop the persecution. He turned the church into a political institution, killed it right there. They weren't ready for it. They were thriving under persecution. As soon as they got introduced to the high life, no more persecution and the political spirit and the money, all that, they weren't ready. And it went into the dark ages. Mm, thank you for your enthusiasm. But God in the last days has got to crown his church. It's the final move of God. And his people are going to love him more than the world, more than all the wealth that's coming off that crown. His people are going to ascend above it all. The remnant church will ascend it above it all. The Laodiceans will not, but the church of Philadelphia will. They will ascend above it all. They will receive the crown. They will have the power, the glory, the wealth, and they will walk with God. They will keep his word and love him all the way until he pulls us out. They won't be diverted. That is awesome. That's going to take some training. That means we're going to have to dwell in a realm of glory that's much greater than this realm. I know everyone's saying, I can handle it. Trust me. Just try me, God. Have you ever studied people that come into sudden wealth? Have you ever studied athletes that got into wealth and they spent all their money? They, they have nothing to live for because they, they want the high life again and they can't go back there. They want that, and that was their identity. I don't know how I got into all that. Anyway, we have to keep our treasure focused. Say focused. And the way we do is daily we focus. We keep him our treasure. The only way you're going to keep God as your treasure is you have to experience him. You, do not keep your God, you don't keep God as your treasure by doing a bunch of works doing this and this and that. That is not. You have to encounter him. You have to experience him. You have to experience the living God. If you're not experiencing him, the treasure part's going to fade away. The world's going to, you're going to start getting enamored. The world's going to try to enamor you. God, you have to get to the place where God's enamoring you again. You're not going to get that from just going to church all the time. You've got to get in a position with your eye in front of him so he can enamor your heart. And he's really good at it. Amen. And if your heart's not being enamored, it's because it's gotten convoluted. It's like, like Nick was saying, he goes, man, I had enough. I just, I, he broke down, and all of a sudden what happened? He just started ascending up into the Lord, started getting up in the morning. Why? His treasure got fixed. God become his treasure. Now you want to do when you're getting up early in the morning, God's your treasure. That's just a fact. So watch this. So he said, here's how, to, here's how to fix the treasure thing. If the light of the body is the eye, don't read that. A light of, he's talking about, yes, using the example of this eye and light of the body, but he's really talking about the eye of the heart here. He goes, um, the light of the, the body is the eye. Therefore, if the eye be single, the whole body will be full of light. Single means two words. We know this now is alpha and interwoven like a basket. Two different words in the Greek. If your eye be singularly interwoven into the Alpha Christ. Say, if your eye be singularly interwoven into him, your whole body's going to be filled with a light he's supplying. Okay? Got that part? That's how you keep the treasure. But if your eye be evil, 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 you wicked sinner. <sighs> sinner. So that's, that's, the way, that's the way everybody reads that. If you're, if you're a sinner, your whole body will be full of darkness. But that's not exactly what he's talking about. Now, we know what that 
Greek word is, which is what, Cody? Poneris. Poneris. Say Poneris. You look up that Greek word Poneris, it's not evil as you think, like you the evil eye, like your neighbor looking at you with the evil eye. They have, a, you know, they have that. Man, I went to fix my fence today because the board was out, and that dog was sitting right there looking at me. And he had a growl deeper than Roscoe's. He said, one more inch, and your finger's mine. He said it in perfect dog language. I heard him. I had the interpretation of his tongues, of his growl. I interpreted. He said, one more inch, you in my territory, boy. He goes, you want to try me? You want to try me? What, what's that? Uh, Clint Eastwood, go ahead. Make my day. Because he was sitting right there, just, just hunched into that thing. I'm like, ho, oh, slow down, slow down. I'm just here to fix the fence post. Keep you over there. Okay, so let's look at this. If your eye be Poneris, here is the breakdown of Poneris. Full of labor. Full of labors. Not talking about your job. He's talking about the spirit that can come from being too subjected to the world system and the toil of the world system. Annoyances. How does your eye get filled with annoyances? Just hang around annoying people. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, that person just annoys me. No, I, he's not talking about annoyances. You're, you're, you've dropped down into the system of the world, and the enemy is going to bring annoyances constantly. He's got a lot of them. He can annoy you. I mean, he knows how to move in because you're in his system. See, the eye has dropped down from a singular interwoven position. It's dropped down into the world system now. I'm not talking about waking up and looking at the world. I'm talking about the position of the eye of the heart where the treasure is, is moved in the wrong place. And so it's anointed hardships. Hardships, that's the trials of life, the hardships of life, financial hardships, all kinds of health hardships, constantly being barraged, uh, harassment. The enemy is good. This is the system of works, toil, and travail that's prevalent in the world system. If you allow your heart to get intertwined into these things, it's going to fill your spirit, your soul, and your body up with those things. Where you can go to church, but you are so full of the wrong stuff all the time that you got to go get a conference for somebody to break it all off of you. We're not called to live from conference to conference. We're called to live from faith to faith, from glory to glory. The lamp of the righteous burns brighter and brighter. Amen? But what we have to do, the reason why we're in that condition, we've dropped out. We've gotten out of alignment. You see that? We weren't diligent, disciplined enough. We hadn't learned yet. We hadn't learned what, he is, what he's wanting us to truly learn. So we're going to God and say, God, I need a miracle. Get this off of me. Break. And then he gets you off, you break through, and then you go back to the same thing. That's not what he's looking for. He's wanting you to come up into the mountain. Amen. He wants you to climb through into some levels where your eye is starting to get full of the glory realm, full of light, full of joy, full of rest, full of life, full of love. Full of freedom, full of liberty, full of glory, full of grace. So you're walking around, God's on your mouth. God's on your, on your glory and said, instead of the last trial you've been through, or what you ever heard what this person did to me, or what that person did, it's always going to be something. And when you're in a little church like this, it's, it's actually amazing how much unity we have. Going after revival in a small setting, which most small settings go after revival, is destined for failure if you can't get up. Why? Because the enemy's going to throw everything at it. And if you can't get up, it's eventually just going to get in you. And when it gets in you, it'll start breeding ground for discontentment, disunion. It happens all the time. Strife, and all of a sudden, this place was supposed to be so glorious. It's like, oh, my God, what's going on that and heaviness and, and all of that. 
Why? Because it's not high enough. Hadn't been able to take it off. So you get thrown to grace, take the heaviness off, start ascending the hill. Lord, getting your eye fixed and letting God enamor you. Amen. So once you've learned to be enamored by God, you have to stay there. The next level is to stay there. The first level is to learn how to do it. The next level is to stay there. But the more glorious you're encountering, the higher you get, the more glorious it is. The air is so glorious up in the Father. Woo! I had gotten a little sidetracked. Can you believe it? I had a little bit. Just, I call it. The, there's two, two, two times a year that sidetracks me. It's the holiday Christmas season. And I say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And it just does it. So January, that's why everybody fasts in January. <laughs> Get back in alignment. And then you got the spring break thing going, you know. But my sidetracks are kind of small compared to others. But still, when you get out, you don't like the feeling because what, when you're in the glory realm, it's like I love it talking to the people in the glory realm because I was talking to Cody the other day. He goes, man, he goes, I don't like this feeling of not being with him. I haven't been with him in two days. I'm like, oh, my God, two years like talking like that. Praise God. But that's awesome because, because when you're encountering God in these higher realms constantly, daily, which we teach you to do, you're getting fee fed. You are feeding from a life that's not of this world. You're feeding from a glory that's not of this world, a love that's not of this world, a rest that's not of this world. And what happens, you get accustomed to it. And you start getting elevated, and so your eye is so tuned into those realms and not this realm. The eye of the heart, I mean, it doesn't mean you don't go to work and you have stuff going on, but it's not the same thing. It's not in you. You're able to handle it. You're getting up in the morning. You're getting prepared for your day. You're not just walking out there unclothed and without armor on. You learn to get full, and you get the armor of God working in your life, and you get the glory and the rest. So you're out there, and you're walking. Now you're starting to advance instead of retreat. Amen? That's why when we go on men's advance, we go on advances. We don't go to men's retreat. We're there to advance, not retreat. Amen? I don't, I don't even understand that word retreat. Praise God. Just stand there. Hallelujah. But then what happens, and I'll share this with you. But then what happens? Am I talking to anybody? Am I just talking to myself? Because I can just keep talking. So what happens is once you learn to stay in a high place, God will assign you something. He'll give you an assignment of faith. Now we're going to talk about the impossible realm. He'll give you an assignment you can't do, and your brother can't do it, and your other brother can't do it. Nobody can do it. It's impossible. Say impossible. And he knows you'll stand there with him because you have the power, the strength, the light to stay there for your faith to be continually fueled by him so the enemy can't come in and convolute your faith. A lot of times what people do when they try to launch into a position of faith with God or God's given them assignment has got to be birthed by faith. What happens is they don't keep their spirit. Listen to what I'm about to say to you because this is huge. Let's say this is the world system and up here is, is the kingdom. They don't keep themselves up here. And what they're doing is not only are they allowing their heart to drop down, their faith is following in. Their faith starts getting convoluted by the world. It starts getting harassed. It starts getting convoluted by toil or offense. And it gets, there's so many things down here. It, it's just darkness is what it is. And when your faith starts getting convoluted, what it does, it drains the faith. Faith has to be empowered. People don't understand that part about faith. Well, I know God, I have faith. That's not the kind of, when you're talking about the faith for the impossible, you have to have a a fuel that keeps it primed. Say primed. You keep it primed by a fuel called rest. Rest is a fuel for faith. Love, the Father's love is a fuel for faith. Life is a fuel. It keeps you primed so you can look at the realm of the impossible daily and not be moved. You can look into the realm of impossible, and this is what God wants to do because he wants to move mountains with you. But he's training you. He's got to train you for this. Because he can't give you an assignment if you're just going to be down here all the time because the enemy's just going to convolute your heart and he's going to just, he's going to grab your faith, see? 
He's going to get it so convoluted that it, it's ineffective. Nobody wants to hear their faith is ineffective, but the fact is, if our faith is effective, it'll do something. Amen? So is he, when we keep it up, and he keeps it up, there's a fuel there that he's having you look into the impossible every day, but you don't see impossible anymore. Why? Because you're up, not down. You see the way maker. You see that? You see through the lenses of glory. You see it through the lenses of power and strength. And you see it through the lens of Christ. That we can do all things. So you, what happens is your heart stays full. The faith stays full. It's the God kind of faith he's looking for. But if you drop it out, he'll start flooding the heart. He'll start flooding the faith. He'll start trying to move it out, offset it. Faith's moving with the heart, my friends. Faith moves with the heart. Your faith moves in line with your... If your heart gets convoluted, your faith gets convoluted. And what happens, you can't move mountains like that. And God is going to assign some of you to move some serious mountains. Glory to God. This is the part he's been training me with. He says, listen, all this is for a reason. Because last year he gave me an assignment. And I'm still in that assignment. And I'm eight months in that assignment now. And I would have never, I have never had a stand. I haven't talked about it, but I've never had a stand like this ever. Not like this. Not what he's asking me to do. He had to prepare for that kind of thing. But that assignment's big. Amen. Can't do it in our own strength. Can't do it in my own strength, but I can, if I can stay in his, I can do it. If I can stay, my faith can stay primed if I can stay in his love. My faith can stay primed because it'll work by his love. I, my faith will stay primed if I stay in his rest and his life. It primes me. It keeps my faith there so it doesn't drop down. Because, how I many you know what I'm talking about? When you drop down, oh, you get all convoluted and everything gets out of whack. I don't know what to explain all that. You just get out of alignment. And it didn't, I like the edge factor. I like waking up being ready to go. Like Nick, he's, when he wakes up, he's ready to go into the mountain of God. He doesn't just wake up and say, where's the coffee? I got to go to work today. Oh, my God. Because he's got the edge, see? When you got the edge, you will get up and do what's necessary to get the job done. Because you're in the zone. Because you've got strength and light and grace working for you. And you're, you're single. You're in there. And it's easier to move that way, too. You move more freely that way because you're not carrying a lot of baggage. You drop out, you get a bunch of baggage. Now you've got to go unload baggage for all the time. I mean, some of you are trying to climb the mountain of God with 50 bags on you. You can't do that. It's too heavy. Go get Sozo. Sozo's an awesome ministry here because it'll get the bags off of you so you can get in the mountain of God. I had to carry all my stuff up. Because I was just probably too hard-headed to do it any other way. Is that good? Good enough? Praise God, Chuck. Did I get an amen from you? <laughs> but I found something up in the mountain. Woo. Father's love can unload anything. Father's love there is different than the Father's love here. Woo! Man, well, what's it feel like? Ugh. Man, it's awesome. He can flush you, fill you, satisfy you, clothe you all in one day. Mm, he's amazing. Love it. But what it does to your faith, whew, you're fueled with it. You're set in the position to release the proper kind of faith. It's the Abrahamic faith. It's that kind of against all hope in the natural. You believe in hope. You stagger no more at the promises of God. You're strong in faith, giving glory to God. Why? Because you're dwelling with him while you're doing this, not down here. Which goes to the point of read Matthew 6, 6. Before all of this happens, what does that say? Because he talks about the lily's grace, how to get your eye into the lily. Consider the lily, get, get your eye fixed. But what does Matthew 6, 6 say? Before all this happens, 
You should know this by heart. But thou, when thou prayest, enter, before you're going to do any of this, enter into your closet, shut the door to the world, the flesh, the devil, and pray to your Father. Get positioned. Your eye has to get positioned. Don't try to exercise faith here. You get too convoluted. Don't try to get your eye fixed here. Get through the door. See the door? Go through the door. Go to the throne of grace. Surrender. Take off. Dismantle. And then remantle. I just preached the message on dismantling and remantling. You, you didn't get that one. That was a good one. Praise God. That's a top tenner. Praise God. We've said top five like 50 times. So <laughs> it's top ten. Hallelujah. Get remantled, but the key, why do we do all this? I'm trying to tell you why before I close tonight. Why are we doing all this? Just to feel good? Well, yeah, that's good too, but why? To move into the position of joint heirship with him. First to find our identity, who we are, and then move into position of joint heirship is kingdom joint heirs where God is going to assign us some serious stuff to do in the last days because he knows we can stay with him. Uphold us. He can assign you faith like he assigned Abraham, stuff that can move a generation. And he knows you can stand there because you're not standing there in your own strength. You're not standing there in your own might. You're standing there in His because you know how to stand there in His. It's one thing to say, I'm going to stand in but It's another thing to know how to do that. But once you learn how to do that, you get positioned. He'll fuel you, keep you there until you can get the kind of faith the Father's looking for. The Abrahamic faith. The impossible faith. Faith for the impossible realm. That's what He wants. Because that kind of faith can move stuff it can bring the kingdom into the earth glory to god praise god let's give god glory because i didn't have a clue what i was going to say tonight <laughs> i sitting there my god i don't know what i'm gonna say i have no clue tonight i said just open it up and let it roll and he did it praise god let's give him glory for that hallelujah I, I, taught, I, I preached myself happy tonight. But once you get back there, and you'll know, you'll know when you get back. How I many of you know when you talk, what I'm talking about? When you get back there, just keep it. Don't lose it. Don't let it go. Learn how to keep that. The Holy Ghost will help you. He's very skilled at it. Amen? Awesome. So tomorrow morning when you wake up, get your coffee, triple shot, double shot, charge. Don't do too much because you, it, well, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, I'll just say this before we close. It's actually too much uh, caffeine or you get yourself rolling too much because the idea is you're getting yourself quiet and uh, it, it's very hard to get quiet when you're zinging. I've had to learn how much I can zing, you know, anyway, you'll learn it. Praise God. Cause you got to get in that rest, that quietness and you move up from there. Oof, you can move up in the Father. We did it yesterday. It was amazing. Praise God. Father, thank you for your word, your wisdom. Father, thank you for the grace. You give us this realm we can live in that's far greater than we could ever be. This realm of strength and love and rest. This realm that we can dwell in constantly above our enemies. This is the protection you've truly granted us dwell above our enemies in the secret place of the Most High. It's there no plague will come nigh our dwelling. When we're in the high places, no plague comes nigh our dwelling. Thank you for the tree of life. Thank you for the Father's love. Thank you for all of it. Praise God. Thank you for the crown. The crown of our generation. The prize of this generation. The crown. There is no greater prize in this generation. Thank you, Father. We are slated to receive it. Whew. Amen.